This concave mirror is made from this reflective film at a cost of 25 cents per square meter. And this mesh of steel runs with a total cost of about $3, and it is almost a hundred times cheaper than these mirrors which are used to convert large amounts of solar radiation into thermal energy and electricity, and we understand that the radical reduction in the cost of these mirrors makes their electricity cheaper than from solar panels, or thermal and nuclear power plants. You may think that these cheap mirrors do not work well, but it is not, and my old videos showed how that mirror focuses the solar radiation here, where it can heat up to temperatures higher than 300 degrees Celsius. In addition, my old videos repeatedly showed how we can turn this thermal energy not only into cheap electricity, but also into very cheap heat for greenhouses, for industrial processes and for district heating of a city. Of course, you may ask, if this device is so wonderful, why has not it made a breakthrough in electricity generation yet, and why do not we see a revolution in agriculture based on cheap greenhouse heating? Why do not we see a revolution in cheap space heating and hot water supply, and revolutionary breakthroughs in factories and mining due to very cheap thermal energy? I can answer as follows, no one is researching or producing these cheap and simple mirrors yet. This very simple idea was first shown by me only two years ago, and this video will show my new experiments over the past year. Unfortunately, my YouTube channel is the only source of information about research on such combinations of meshes and films. In addition, let's assume that someone decided to create a startup to manufacture and install this type of solar heaters, and let's look at the problems that the startup will face. Perhaps you think that this cheap film has a short lifespan, but now I show that my film has been living for many months under snow and wind. Here we can notice that there is a strong wind now, but pay attention here, and we see that the film is motionless, because it is very stretched. Unfortunately, solar radiation and weather cause films to edge, and one of my old videos showed the life of a mirror month after month. It turned out that the life of the film ended after 18 months in this way, but it was the cheapest film, made from one layer of Mylar 20 micron thick, and maybe this startup will find a more durable film. So, that startup should create the possibility of replacing films every one or two years, and now I will show an example of the replacement on a row of these three mirrors, when first a film roll is placed along the entire row, and then the film is fixed with meshes. But I think another replacement method is more promising, when first a rectangle of film is fixed on a similar multi-year frame, and then they are fixed on a mesh. I think the height of the frame should be larger, 2 or 3 meters, and the optimal width would be between 1 and a half and 3 meters for installation by two workers who should spend less than a minute replacing each frame. In addition, that startup should create a factory to remove old films from frames and install new films on old frames, so that the total cost of the film replacements is about one dollar per square meter, including the cost of film, logistics and salaries. That startup must find a way to reduce or eliminate these wrinkles, which decrease the thermal energy production, and now we see that getting rid of the wrinkles is possible. Now I am showing this mirror film of other bloggers, which also has these wrinkles, and now we see how these wrinkles are removed with hot air from this heat gun. Of course, I tried to remove these wrinkles with this heat gun, and you can see how it worked. This is the result of removing the wrinkles in all four corners of my mirror. But it is obvious that the startup should not use handheld heat guns, but some hot objects in the form of such a frame that can be carried by two people or a machine. 
It was the first option for removing wrinkles, and now I will describe the second option, and I show you the Mylar film again to remind you what wrinkles it had. But this is the same mirror, but the film is not made of Mylar but polyethylene, and we see that there are no wrinkles, because polyethylene and Mylar have different stretch parameters. This is my attempt to use reflective polypropylene film, and here we see the cause of my failure and understand that these are the places of maximum stretch of the film, but these corners have almost no wrinkles. Now I am trying to show you the stretching force of the film. The third option is based on various influences on a reflective film with temperature and pressure during its installation on the frame, or after the installation, or this option gives necessary deformations to the film before the installation. Let me show you some of my little experiments, and now I remind you how many wrinkles the Mylar film had in the beginning. But this is the same mirror, but now I have used this concave frame, while in the beginning the frame consisted of four straight sides, and we see that the concave frame has reduced the wrinkles several times. It happened because the edges of the film gradually stretch when we press the sides of the concave frame in this way, due to the fact that its curvature is greater than this curvature. It is also obvious that these outermost steel rods are important for proper stretching of the film. Let's look at another experiment and pay attention to the wrinkles in these corners. Then I stretched the film in these directions, and then the frame was installed again, and now we can see wrinkles in the center corner. But now the number of wrinkles has decreased slightly. Obviously, that startup needs to research several phenomena to reduce the size of this solar radiation spot from our cheap mirrors. Now I will show one of those phenomena, and now these parts of the mirror are temporarily covered, and this area of the mirror creates this solar radiation spot. We see that my mirror focuses radiation well horizontally, but poorly focuses it in this direction, vertically. This phenomenon is one of the reasons that the height of my receiver is noticeably greater than its width. One of my old videos two years ago described in detail that phenomenon which occurs due to the fact that horizontal steel rods are the source of slight convexities of the reflective film. In addition, my old video described measuring the power of heating a liquid with my mirror, and it turned out that the thermal power is approximately 500 watts per square meter of mirror at solar noon. This is 20 or 30 percent less than the midday power of these expensive mirrors, and these tens of percent are explained by several causes. For example, this power focusing leads not only to the fact that solar photons go past this receiver, but also to the fact that we are forced to increase the size of the receiver, and this increases the leakage of thermal energy from it. My old videos also described other causes, including that we can lose energy due to the wrinkles or the shadow of the receiver, and that we lose energy due to the shadows of these rods and the decrease in the reflectance of the film due to film edging and accumulation of dirt. But on the other hand, our systems are several tens of times cheaper than those expensive mirror systems, and it seems realistic to achieve a total cost of our systems in the range of between 10 and 15 dollars per square meter, including receivers. That cost per square meter leads to this very cheap cost of power, about 2 cents per watt of thermal power at solar noon. But achieving that cost requires a lot of effort from that startup, because it needs to do a lot of research, create automated production of mirrors and receivers, and automate their installation.